Buenos días, soy Vivian García, soy la responsable. Good morning. Good morning, my name is Vivian García. I'm the responsible of CEO Water Mandate of Global Compact Columbia Network. So today we want to give a warm welcome to this webinar. Entrepreneurial leaders are putting into practice water management. So today we would like to share with you all that you have different languages available such as English, Portuguese, and Spanish, for you to connect yourselves. So right now, we will share with you the instructions for you to start joining with your language. So you can then, according to your preferences and according to what you can see on the screen, you can select your language using this icon and you can select the language that you would like to listen this webinar. So, as I have said before, I would like to give a warm welcome to this event, this agenda you can see on the screen shows all of the different items that we will be checking today. So it's good to say that this is an initiative that has been putting together at regional level, different networks of global compact from Brazil, Guatemala, Colombia, and Mexico. And additionally to this, to the initiative of Aguanosune of the program of development and cooperation of the Swiss embassy and the Pacific Institute as well. In order to highlight the importance of these initiatives, CEO Mandate for Water, Aguanosune, and Water Action Hub Platform, which is the time to share knowledge of projects of the companies carrying out in regards to water management. So we are inviting you to this event today. That's why such as Brazilian companies, Mexican companies, and Peruvian companies, Colombian companies will share with you all their experiences facing the different activities carried out in regards to water resource and how these different actions are impacting their businesses. So this webinar, also can be used to encourage other type of companies to disseminate their own initiatives and also to put together their efforts to other initiatives that are going on. So we also invite you all that through social networks, you can start disseminating everything that's happening in this type of events through hashtag Water Action Hub and hashtag CEO Water Mandate. So right now, let's start with greetings from our Executive Director of Global Compact Network, Colombia, Mauricio Lopez Gonzalez. Can you hear me well? Yes, great. Okay, so first of all, greetings to everyone present here today in this wonderful, wonderful as the beginning of the year is. So 22nd of January, we are working together for different networks of Global Compact of the Latin region. The Brazilian network, which I will want to give thanks for their support. The Guatemalan network, also all of our recognition. The Mexican network as well. And I want to greet and also ourselves the Colombian network. Con la cooperación Suiza so, with the Swiss cooperation el Instituto and with the Pacific Institute CEO Water Mandate. So, which is our objective of today? Which is our core objective? To talk about water, to show precisely with a lot of enthusiasm and very proud that we have many, many companies in the whole region working in this regards. We will be sharing with you Peruvian experiences, Brazilian, Mexican experiences, Colombian experiences that are encouraging us to achieve all of this process. Why? Because water, the objective six of uh, sustainable development, water, clean water, health water, it's essential. But not only as has been said before, water for our life, of course, but we also need to use water as a very important element to transform cultures, 
to work with the different economic developments of uh, different appropriations of a community and uh, sustainable cities as well. And also to mention the topic that has to do with agricultural topics, energetic topics, just to add some examples. And also to work together in order to work with different partnerships. And this is making an essential part of this action. That's why I'm very proud to present and to say that we are working with this event and empowering in a very deeply manner, the good management of water in the Latin region, not only through the academic activities, no, not only through uh, ideas or thinkings or thoughts, but also with entrepreneur actions, direct actions with examples that are totally clear, strong, that are used and will be used and will be replicated for more companies and organizations in our continent. So I uh, would not like to end before giving thanks to Vivian Garcia from Columbia Network and of course our team of Columbia Network and also the team of the Brazilian Network and Karen in the Guatemalan Network and Mauricio in the Mexican Network who are working so hard to organize this event from the logistics side with Diana, Carlos, from the Swiss Corporation, my colleague Carlos, my colleague in this activities in regards to the Global Compact to strengthen and to have this event as the first event of many that will come where we can start promoting in a very active manner this example, this activities, and also the strength and commitment of the different companies of the Latin region towards a better life and better water management. Thank you very much and a great day to everyone. Reminding, of course, that in the pandemic times, the mask and social distancing and social responsibility and self-care, it's also making part of this type of behavior as individuals towards a better tomorrow and certainly stronger and with more dynamism and passion and more knowledge, of course. Thank you very much again, Bibian, for giving us the floor to be able to share with you all these words. Okay, thank you, Mauricio. Now we would like to give the floor to the Executive Director of Global Compact Brazilian Network, Carlo Pereira. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be with you here today and being a part of this opening panel with my great friend, Mauricio. We've been through a lot, right, Mauricio, here at the Global Compact and all these themes that we have to handle in the organization. And without a doubt, I'd like to greet all my friends from all these different countries that are taking part in this event especially Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, and Guatemala. I'm very happy that we can hold this event all together. And I'm also very happy to handle such an essential topic. Mauricio has already addressed all the importance of water. I won't be repetitive here, but I would like to highlight is the transversality of water. So when we work on the SG. SDGs, without a doubt, we do talk a lot about the connection between them. So one theme depends on the other. So there's a fundamental interdependence of that. The 2030 agenda is very much based on those matters. And when we look at water, without a doubt, and especially the SDGs, DG6 about water and sanitation, without a doubt, we can quickly understand all the connections and dependence between them. So obviously there's the effect of water and sanitation in healthcare, for instance, in food, in basic education, in work, in labor, we can't forget that in Brazil, the biggest cause of absenteeism at work is a result 
of diseases resulting from a lack of water, quality water. So it's an essential topic. And as Marusa well said at the end, it's worth noting that in Latin America, an area that has, or a region that has a lot of hurdles and gaps in access to quality water and sanitation. So I'd like to give you some figures from Brazil in case you don't know only half of the Brazilian population, meaning 100 million of our citizens, do not have access to basic sanitation. 100 million people, 35 million Brazilians do not have access to quality water. And at this time, while we're going through this pandemic, and the WHO says that we should wash our hands every two hours. But most or uh, many of our citizens and throughout all of Latin America do not have access to such a basic input. Another WHO data, we know that 20, in 2025, half of the population on the planet so half of the population on the planet will live in regions with high water stress. And about the companies, they do play an essential role, first of all, because they are major water consumers, but also because we know that they require an environment where Obviously, they do have access to water, but also sanit basic sanitation for everyone so that business can continue to flourish. So that's very important. And to conclude, I'd like to say that corporate leaders are being called on to act on the agenda for society, such as water. I always like to mention the Edelman Consulting that shows us that 86% of people in 33 countries surveyed believe that corporate leaders should step up and take action in relation to important systems such as water. So that's my message. And I'd also like to invite these companies to base themselves on these examples that will be hearing today, but also bring in your own events and take part of networks such as the Global Compact so we can effectively advance in these themes throughout the entire region. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, licenciado. Finalmente, tenemos a Diana Rojas, quien es la oficial regional para Latinoamérica de la Agencia Suiza para el Desarrollo y la Cooperación. Bienvenida. Buenos días a todas y todos, eh, hermanos de América Latina, siempre es un gusto eh, estar con ustedes reunidos pensando en el agua. Creo que, como se mencionaba anteriormente, tenemos muchos desafíos como América Latina, pero también muchas oportunidades por la cercanía cultural eh, y lingüística que tenemos hoy con estas nuevas innovaciones sectores tecnológicas que nos permiten incluso tener eh, la, los mismos discursos en línea en traducción simultánea. Eh, les agradezco muchísimo al equipo de Pacto Global, a mi colega Carol Hurtado, quienes organizaron este encuentro que está especialmente diseñado para aprender a través del ejemplo. Eh, porque nos hemos vuelto muy elocuentes a decir como humanidad qué es lo que deberíamos hacer, pero poco activos en llevarlo a cabo. Y creo que los desafíos globales, como se mencionaba, los objetivos de desarrollo sostenible es un marco que resalta esos objetivos, eh, esos desafíos globales que tenemos como humanidad y el agua es una prioridad para el ser humano. Tenemos digamos, la evidencia en temas de escasez, en el cambio de los regímenes hídricos, el cambio climático está aquí con nosotros y vamos a, a, a por un camino para empeorarlo y creo que es ahora 
Política, eh, el sector empresarial en efecto está motivado, está trabajando y a eso nos tenemos que unir también los ciudadanos y las instancias gubernamentales para que ese cambio estructural sea mucho más eficaz y sobre todo mucho más fácil. Eh, quería contarles que desde la cooperación suiza tenemos una iniciativa que algunos de ustedes conocen, que es el, el agua nos une, eh, que ya desde hace 10 años viene trabajando con el sector empresarial, iniciamos con cuatro empresas y y eh, al día de hoy ya hay 65 empresas que vienen trabajando en la medición de sus impactos ambientales, en la reducción, priorizando obviamente estas inversiones eh, para reducir los impactos tanto por consumo como por contaminación y el involucramiento como actores realmente eh, transformadores en el territorio, hacer parte con las comunidades, con los gobiernos locales, con otras organizaciones, para que la gestión del agua y la gobernanza del agua sea mucho más eficaz. Eh, tenemos una publicación reciente que parte de esa información y algunos de los socios eh, que están citados el día de hoy del sector empresarial la van a compartir con ustedes. Y en el chat ahora mismo les voy a poner el enlace de la publicación que está en castellano y en inglés con fichas eh, que resumen esas buenas prácticas, las tecnologías, eh, para no solamente comunicar lo que se ha hecho, sino para invitarlos a ustedes también desde el sector empresarial y como ciudadanos a ser parte de este cambio eh, que es muy motivador eh, para mantenernos en este bonito planeta. Entonces, muchas gracias a todos por estar aquí y adelante. Bienvenidos. Muchísimas gracias, Diana. After that, welcome by our main representatives today from the Global Compact Network and the Swiss government. We want to know where all of our guests are. So through a survey that we're going to be conducting right now, we're going to learn who is with us, from what regions, where they are, our guests are, our audience, Esta primera pregunta okay, so this first question has to do with what region are you in right now? And what sector do you belong to or work in? So we encourage you to fill out the uh, survey. So choose the appropriate option. Bueno, entonces en unos instantes vamos a ver las respuestas. So in a few minutes we're going to be able to look at the answers in order to see where our guests are across the world. Mientras tanto, por el chat, también nos están saludando desde El Salvador. Y también a los invitamos también a participar a través del chat. Así que les invitamos a participar a través del chat. Desde Colombia también. Bienvenido. Río de Janeiro. Okay. 
Bolivia, Recife. Bolivia, Arrecife, Brazil. From the Bogota Waterworks, Kelly, welcome, Mexico, fine. Universidad Distrital de Colombia, Juan Pablo, bienvenido. Desde Perú. Distrital University, Juan Pablo, welcome from Perú. Bio dos, natural water in Peru, in Colombia. La Paz, Bolivia, excelente. Someone from bueno, La Paz, in Bolivia, fine. Okay, so, at this time, we're showing the results, and according to our survey, 74% of our audience is in South America, 17% in Northern, in North America, that is Mexico, Canada, and the US, 1% are in Europe. And as far as what sector you work for, 57% work for the private sector, and we feel that this is excellent because we need for the private sector to shine with all these initiatives and projects that are ongoing as far as water management. This is quite important for the other sectors. 17% work for the government sector, public institutions, was 12% for academia, 10% civil society, and 5% others, or other, I'm sorry. Fine. Okay, let me tell you this. The seawater mandate is a public-private initiative that was launched by the UN General Secretary in 2007 and has been implemented by the uh, UN's Global Compact in partnership with the Pacific Institute that involves different actors, different uh, stakeholders, such as companies, civil society, government institutions, and others. The Global Compact is a call for action by CEOs and business leaders globally. Also, the initiative Water Brings Us Together is being held in the framework of the Swiss Water Project led by the Swiss government cooperation agency within the Global Water Initiatives Program. Since 2010, they've been working with the private sector, with public institutions and research centers in order to promote a responsible, committed uh, water management. In order to view and visualize all of the actions that are being undertaken based on these initiatives, a very important tool that we have is the Water Action Hub. And so we want to greet Lillian Holmes right now. She's a researcher, an associate researcher from the Pacific Institute, and she will give us some details about this very important tool. Go ahead, Lillian. Thank you so much for this introduction. I am very grateful for the chance to be here today and speak to you all about the Water Action Hub. I will be using a PowerPoint presentation that Juliana is sharing. Thank you so much. I appreciate that as well. And the presentation has been translated into Portuguese. Uh, so hopefully that will be helpful. Um, I will try to to move quickly and uh, with the idea that it would be nice to have some questions at the end of this presentation from anyone in the audience who may have a question. But if there is not time for that, I will also list my email address and I would recommend anyone who's interested to send me an email and I will be happy to answer more questions that way. Next slide. So what is the Water Action Hub? The Water Action Action Hub is a collaboration and knowledge sharing platform. It was created in 2012 by the CEO Water Mandate, uh, where I work, and it is uh, developed to meet a need in the water stewardship space. When the hub was developed, the CEO Water Mandate felt that there were many organizations, businesses, NGOs, 
nonprofits, academics, and others who were interested in collaborating on water stewardship, but they did not know uh, where to get started or where there were others who were interested in working together. And because water is a shared problem that is, uh, you know, others in the basin will affect one another's water availability, water quality, it's very important to be able to work together. Uh, the hub is free, as you see on the side, it's global in scope. And Latin America and South America actually have a very, uh, a very good participate rate of participation in the hub. We have more than 70 projects in Mexico, more than 70 projects in Brazil. That's really a lot and that's a chance for the companies on this call um, to have more potential partners if they are interested in collaboration. Next slide. 2020 was a great year. Here for the hub, we have now uh, more than 1,500 projects and more than 900 organizations. Uh, many of those were just recruited to the hub in 2020, so it's a great time. If your company has already uh, been a part of the hub, it's a great time now to, to come back and update it because we have new uh, users, more eyes on your profile potentially. But it's also a great time if you've never used it before uh, to get started. And as you can see, the site is available in English, Portuguese, and Spanish. Next slide. So there are two main ways that the hub is used by um, our, all of our users, which as I said, our users range from companies. There's probably, the most users are from companies. The next most frequent type of user would be NGOs or uh, civil society organizations or nonprofits. Um, and then, then after that would be more technology providers or consultants and academics and so on. For these users of the hub, the hub is useful as a catalog. So it's a way for a company, for example, or an NGO to raise awareness of the good work that they do on water. Um, get the word out, share, uh, you know, build awareness for what you have done. But as the slide shows, we are moving more and more as a way to um, spur new partnerships and create, activate new, uh, new projects. And so there are some tools of the hub that are oriented toward this, this creation of new partnerships. Um, when you more under the catalog side of things, you create a profile for your organization and you list your project, you list a few key details about your project, such as the sustainable development goals that are involved, um, also the, uh, the type of project, is it water quality, is it wash oriented, that kind of uh, information. And then the hub has an algorithm, if we could go to the last slide, sorry, the hub has an algorithm that uh, will match you with other uh, projects or organizations that seem to align with your needs that you have input into the hub as well as your location. Um, you can also see on this slide it's possible to send a message to another project. Um, I have a, the, the slide shows an image that's part of the global map search the hub has a very sophisticated way to search for projects that might interest you. And then you can send a message to a project asking for questions about the details of how they did their work or even proposing a new partnership if you believe that there is um, shared interest between you and another organization on the hub. Next slide. So in 2020, we have done a lot of work uh, to bring new tools to the hub. You can see the slide is describing some of the new tools for coalitions. Um, this is perhaps won't apply to most of you. Um, I know that many of these tools have been taken up by the CEO Water Mandate Initiative, uh, the Water Resilience Coalition, excuse me, <clears throat> the Water Resilience Coalition. Um, but for businesses that are not yet a member of a coalition, it may not be as useful. But the, these new upgrades protect privacy and do other important uh, things for users who wish to collaborate with other companies or other members of the hub without making public all of the information. Next slide. 
We also added uh, data layers to the hub. Water quality, wash, and uh, water stress. And you can see this is an image from the area around Sao Paulo. Um, the idea of this data effort is to be able to inform decision making. For example, if you're, you are a company and you have many different locations uh, where you have, for example, manufacturing sites, and you don't know where you should begin an intervention about water, you would be able now to use the hub to see and explore what areas have the greatest degree of water stress and where it may be most strategic for you to act. And if you are attempting to collaborate with another company, you can see where other company locations are on our map in conjunction with this information. Um, next slide is good. That's about all that I have to, to share today. Um, other than if you are a company and you are interested in this, uh, in this tool, the Water Action Hub, but you don't have the time to get started, I would encourage you still to reach out. You can see my email address. Um, thank you for posting it in the chat as well. And you can see uh, it on the, the page in, in front of you. Please feel free to send me an email. Um, I have colleagues who speak Spanish and Portuguese who will be able to assist you as well uh, to answer your questions and even to create a profile on your behalf if that would help you to get engaged. Thank you so much. It's been a great opportunity to speak with you and I'll turn this back to Vivian. Muchísimas gracias, Lilian. Así que, eh, ustedes... Thank you so much, Lilian. So you're getting first hand knowledge of this uh, amazing tool. And what we want to do now is to encourage you to use this tool to promote your projects, to conduct partnerships, but particularly to manage water better in your region. So I want to encourage you to start checking this tool, review this tool based on uh, Lillian's instructions, and we'll be expecting any of your questions in this regard. Okay, now just to provide everyone a chance to participate, we're going to conduct a second survey. We're going to, you're going to see it in a few seconds, and it has to do with the corporate management of most participants of the private sector, how this requires greater assessment or advice. So these are some of the choices for you to select, and you can click on this, uh, the appropriate answer on the survey. Okay, we're going to look at the answers in a few seconds concerning most of audiences' needs regarding water management. Durante el transcurso de cada una de las intervenciones, estamos In the course of this presentation, we're going to be sharing the information on the people who have uh, spoken, thereby enabling communication between the stakeholders and the people in attendance today as speakers.
Bueno, y aquí tenemos okay, una... And here we have a note from Diana Rojas from Swiss Corporation, who's telling us that all best practices and technologies and territorial actions by partner companies are on the water action of the cooperation of the cars that have been released are on the link that she just posted on the chat room. Bueno, y han aparecido nuestros resultados. Okay. Now we have the results. So we can see that the greatest, the highest percentage of the, they're quite similar, has to do with needs involving new technologies to improve the quality of physical chemical uh, guidelines for reuse. Also, the impact assessment methodologies for the environmental impact then research and access to new uh, wastewater treatment technologies, followed by technologies on collection and use of rainwater for industrial-based processes. And finally, 8% support affluent treatment for agricultural processing uh, systems. Thank you for participating. We will be using these kinds of surveys in subsequent events that have to do with the water mandate, that what brings us together, and the uh, water action hub. And this time, then, we want to start the second session of this webinar that has to do precisely with meeting and getting to know more about these companies that have made an effort to work on water management. We feel that this is uh, something very interesting because today we have such diverse sectors as food, cement, oil, paper, and the textile sector. This is why right now we're going to welcome the CEO of the Global Compact Guatemala, Karen Chinchilla, who will be our moderator for this session, also with the support of the following guests, Sandra Yamile Alvarez Acero. She's a thematic leader for the comprehensive water management at the environmental management and relations of the HSE, uh, Vice President of Office at Ecopetrol Colombia. Juan Octavio Mejia, the Vice President, Operations Vice President of Fabricato and Textiles Manufacturer in Colombia, Merlin Chupitas, the environmental supervisor of the Union Andean of the Cement Manufacturers, Juliana Piccoli from Brazil, of the Sustainability Studies Center of the Getulio Vargas Foundation on uh, Life Cycle Analysis Projects in Brazil, Arturo Guzman, the sustain environmental sustainability manager for Hermes Group in Mexico, and Diego Bongiorno Cruz, a sustainability engineer and environmental Engineer Clavi. Thank you all. Welcome. Go ahead, Karen. Okay, thank you very much, Vivian. I want to use this time to give thanks to the remaining networks of Colombia, Brazil, Mexico for this time given. I'm very glad to see different participants from Central American region. And well, I want to give thanks to all of our attendees, more than 100 people that have been connected. So this is quite interesting for us because you can see the relevance of this topic and shows the interest uh, to be able to implement better practices, technologies, and innovation in regards to the maintenance of water resource. So, well, with no further to say, I'm sure you're quite interested in knowing the practices of these companies that are quite important in the region. I will start with a question that was being asked, and I would like our panel members to share their ideas about their experiences. So I'm going to be asking this question in a general manner. So you want me to repeat this question again? I can do it. So please, the question would be the following one. In order to start with this panel, why did your company decide to work with improving water management activities? So we do know that this can do 
uh, because of different reasons, because of competitivity, because of different standards, because of different mandates, because of savings. So that uh, are some of the questions that can be answered. But we would like to know in each of your cases, I would like to start with Sandra from Ecopetrol, Colombia. Okay, good morning, Karen. Good morning to everyone. Thanks again for your question, Karen. First of all, I would like to highlight that Ecopetrol is a company that works more with water than oil because per each barrel of oil that we extract and put on the surface, this barrel comes with 13 barrels of water. This is allowing us that our commitment and priority that we have in regards to water management has to be number one. On the other hand, it's quite important to say that we operate along Colombia, the whole country. So as any user of water, we do have to face this complexity every day because water source has a lot to do with droughts, floods, and so on. So there's something quite interesting as well that we operate specifically in rural areas, and we saw this before. In rural areas, the topic that has to do with coverage, access to water, drinking water is quite low. That's why that this is a reality that we have in our country that we need to face and we see that this is something happening in the territories that we operate. So once we recognize this situation, what is that we did in our company? In our company, we have started with a strategy to have water management based on three different axes. The first one would be efficiency in regards to water management it has to do with doing it well through the beginning of our operations. In 2020, we're able to close with a reusing of 96.5 million of cubic meters of water. So the second axis, also quite important, has to do with this sustainability and water safety that has a very strong focus in regards to increasing the access to water and health. Um, and this is another goal uh, to reach uh, 22 million beneficiaries towards 2022. That's it's quite important because this legitimates the reality of the territory where we operate. Lastly, we have another access that has to do with governance. And this is why we're here today. That's what was being said before by the other speakers is to generate this collective action. That's what we want to do. Additionally, with our strategy, we have it framed in a technological element that we think it's quite important, it's core, to be able to harmonize the complexity of our operations with the challenges that we're facing, not only with the society, but with the environment. That's quite important. Uh, what are we doing in Ecopetrol when we manage water in such a comprehensive manner? First of all, we gain control in regard to the sustainability of our operations because if you are able to determine which is the minimum amount of water you require to uh, have our operations with sustainability, we reduce operational cost for sure. That's some, something quite important. We uh, enable reserves or oil and to manage water in an adequate manner, we are able to enable this activity, but we also are able to put into our own service this water that we're producing because if we are not doing this, water wouldn't be there. So we are working in such conditions that we would like water to be used by another sector. That's why it's quite important and that's why we are working on these regards. So there's something else that is, that is quite important that I think every company should uh, start working on that the interest groups today do not want only to have our companies or that the private sector to be able to comply only. No, that's not enough. To comply, it's not enough. They would like us to work towards uh, creating value and to create future for the society, this future towards the environment. That's why I think that water management is something core and does bring a lot of benefits on the competitive side for companies such as ours. Thank you, Sandra. Sandra, I think you were able to summarize quite well this interesting strategy and also to start uh, showing the benefits that you have seen in your company. I would like to continue now with Juan Mejia from uh, Colombia as well, from Fabricato, a textile industry. I will repeat the question again because how can you improve water management in your company? Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the question. Thank you for having Fabricato to participate in this amazing event. Fabricato is a textile manufacturing company. We as a textile manufacturer play an essential role for humanity. We all need to work. So, 
making the fabric that will protect us, cover us, and provide us comfort requires and more resources. And so textile science has been built throughout time in different ways, but it is clear that we've had to use many resources from ancient textiles on today. One of the industries with the highest consumption levels for production purposes. This acknowledgement led us to take action because we do need to wear clothes, but we need to further develop, develop uh, textile manufacturing science. And I'm the first to acknowledge that we're having a big impact. And for a long time, Fabricato has been working on water management strategies, but in the past few years, we've delved deeper into our plans and actions, and we can split this into three separate aspects. First is water management. Fabricato has a 300 hectare forest where we have 300,000 trees. They're close to the water resource uh, source. So we have the responsibility of caring for that forest, of protecting all of these uh, water sources, the rivers. And we have a reservoir where we're using that new technology, and then we collect the water downstream. So number one, we need to protect the forest in order for it to provide good resources. Number two is the industrial process itself. So we need to always try to develop technology that uses the least amount of water possible. And we've been working on this for a few years. Any decisions, internal decisions as to the purchase of equipment always is always based on environmental guidelines or questions. And everything that we've been doing in the past few years has to involve this factor of water consumption. And the third component is water recovery. And we do this through a wastewater recovery or treatment plant. If we're talking about figures, we're talking about 100,000 cubic meter per month. Just do the math. I use 10 cubic meters per month at my place, so do the math. So we take this water to the treatment plant and it goes back to the industrial processing process in such a way that we are recirculating nearly 65% of the water that we use up. We've been doing this for the past few years. Collection has also dropped. We're not talking only about how much we collect. We're giving back about 50%. This is how we feel that we need to continue to work in order to reduce these levels. And we believe that textile science can further be developed through recirculation and very low water consumption levels. This is what Fabricato is doing at this time. Thank you very much. Maybe we have some comments so that the audience can uh, participate. So far, we see that these sectors that result in using a large amount of water is just an innate commitment to preserve natural resources. And I think this is very important to stress. Of course, we need to start including new technologies for operations. 
Thank you both. I'm going to go to the Google Maps from Google Verdes from Mexico right now to the Colombia to tell us about what led us as a company to improve uh, Water Thank you very much, first of all, for inviting me to participate in this event. So let me share with you all that Grupo Erdes, it's a company 100% from Mexico, working with the production and distribution and selling of food products. And we have been working in this regards more than 100 years, precisely delivering our products to the different Mexican families and also foreign families. And obviously, we are very well committed with this topic that has to do with sustainability and protection of the environment. So we, in year 2018, we were able to align our sustainability strategies of the whole company towards the compliance of the sustainability development objectives of 2030, and very specifically those that have to do with the planet line. So we were able to work with three different objectives, which are quite important, which are uh, objective six, water and health, and objective 12, which is production and responsible consumption, and number 13, which has to do with actions. And specifically, the topic has to do with water. We have been working uh, for years now, even before we were able to uh, subscribe with these uh, objectives, we have been working much with water management activities. With different initiatives, we have been able to develop internally in our different facilities. Many of these activities and many of those activities are uh, the implementation of programs and plans that have to do with the reduction of the efficient use of water and also measuring. This is something quite important because uh, the fact of being able to measure will help you improve, obviously, in a constant manner your activity. So this program that have to do with the efficient reductions have allowed us to reduce this water consumption in a continuous manner. We have been able to work also in other type of lines, which are re the reduction of uh, wastewater and also the treatment of water and recovery of water to recycle water and to use it in other secondary operations in our own facilities. We have been able to work also towards the recovery and the use of rainwater. And also one of the most recent projects are um, to include, that project has to do with water fingerprint fingerprint in our products. This is something that we see as a, uh, an emblematic activity towards the establishment of uh, new initiatives. So the benefits that we have been able to see have been great. Not only those that have to do with competitivity and standards, no, as was said before by one of our colleagues, the standards and rules are something that are in our core. We also have to comply with those. So competitivity is also something that we are working with and we also need to be working with this type of topics but beyond this has to do with the commitment the responsibility towards the sustainability as users of water that we need to work with so we have been done this and we have been working with this initiatives we have received benefits such as in year 2019, we're able to achieve the reduction of 22% of the creation of wastewater in relation to 2018. So, well, now we have been working many years in this regards, and this has been done in many of our facilities, such as Potosí, the Mexican plan distribution, Mexican uh, site, where we were able to recover rainwater and we use it uh, to for irrigation to avoid using water from other sources. So, well, we have other initiatives in place. And this is something uh, that has to do with sustainability and management of water. It's quite important from our strategic standpoint. Thank you very much, Arturo. Let's go back to South America. Marilyn from Peru, uh, from UNASEN they can share with us their experience, taking advantage that many of you have answered this before. So maybe Marilyn, why is it that you started working with this decision? Which are the benefits that you have seen in your company in order to have a better water management? Okay, good morning. 
Again, as I have said before, I work with Union Andina Cemento and the uh, manufacturing of cement. It's a dry process, does not require a huge amount of water. Independently, we do recognize that water is a scarce resource. That's why we decided to improve our management. So under the focus of a sustainable strategy that translates into environmental responsibility, we need to carry out these activities to guarantee the continuity of our activities and the sustainability of our ac actions. So at the same time, water management of UNASEM is in line under the principles of the national plan, excuse me, national environmental plan created by the environmental ministry in year 2015. Also, as was being mentioned before by our colleagues, this is beyond the standard. That means then that we need to see this resource as something quite important and also to have a good relationship with the community that can help us so much with our activities. So year 2013, together with Awanosune and Swiss Cooperation, we, under their support and advisory, we were one of the five companies in order to obtain the water fingerprint in Peru. That helped us a lot to open doors. First of all, to identify our fingerprint measurement, we were able to reduce consumption of water and there are four different programs that we have in UNASEM, which are project studies, optimization of processes, conservation of the basin and strengthening of capabilities that basically is to make awareness and have a culture with the different workers. And year 2018, the National Authority of Water, that it's under the government, it's approving a standard that has to do with promoting or giving incentives to the private sector in order to have the fingerprint being mission and to have actions to reduce consumption. And we have another program with the share value with the water basin. And for us it was quite interesting to be able to work in this contest, to participate in this contest. And we received this blue certificate under this program, Aguanosune responsible uh, companies. And then this is what we have been doing, but which are the benefits here? And uh, this is a recognition that is quite important that the government gives us. And another benefit would be the sustainability of the business itself, the strengthening of capabilities with other their stakeholders, and also to strengthen the different activities with the community. And one of the programs that are requested by the government that we have been working with has to do with the shared value with the water basin. This is showing that the activities of the company, of private companies are great because we need to work together. The government, community work together in order to reach objectives and to improve this water basins. Thank you very much, Marilyn. Let's continue now. I would like then Juliana Piccoli from Hertulio Vargas uh, Cooperation to share with us her mechanisms. Hello, good morning. Hello. Good, morning. good morning, Karen. Good morning, everyone. Well, we work at the Center of Studies in Sustainability, and as that, we believe that it's our duty to assist companies, to help companies, different than all of you who are here and actually representing companies. We represent a research center, so it's very important to have this role to take knowledge to companies and offer them the best business management tools. So we believe that the water footprint and the project brings us together. It's one of the paths, and it's a great path to, ha path to have better water management throughout the entire chain not just a part of the chain where the, co the company is included. I believe that after the water crisis in, in 2014 in Brazil and with the impact of climate change that is becoming more and more common, we see, and it's very evident, that the operating risk related to the water scarcity affects companies. So there's an economic risk associated to that, to the lack of uh, water in operations. So I believe that after that water crisis, companies were 
more focus, focusing more on that subject and thinking about the water footprint, not just the own company, but looking at the entire chain and it, the company's suppliers as well. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Juliana, por tu respuesta bastante concisa. Y por último, Good morning. Thank you for the invitation to speak here and for the introduction. At Clabin, water management isn't a new topic, but it is a topic that we have evolved a lot in the past years. In our essence, is all about building a sustainable business, generating value to our employees and stakeholders. And as it's a forestry-based company that turns uh, the forest into paper and into packaging, we've been handling that water topic for a long time now. But we do know that the water resource is scarce and it's a finite object. So we want to deliver a product with a good water footprint and that good water footprint offers competitiveness for the companies and that was one of the benefits for the company that gave us a tool so we can size that water footprint of one of our products and without a doubt we've already started to expand that to other products as well so that we can show the entire chain our product footprint and how we can act inside the plants, especially through water reuse and lowering consumption. In 2020, we had a great evolution, which was to define the CLAB in sustainable development goals. And among those, we've included three related to water. One of them is always having initiatives in the places where we operate to increase the water security. 100% of our forest operations are operated by us, by us, and we have forestry management that sees the water consumption according to that water basin and lower specific water industrial water consumption by 20%. So within those, object, within those goals, we have the water use, we create committees to discuss the topic, and that brings on benefits not only for our savings or our economy by using the resource, but also society in getting ready for future use regulations and adding value to the company. Today, we are recognized and we maintain sustainability indexes such as the Brazilian Stock Exchange Sustainability Index and as well as for the Dow Jones Index. That summarizes value generation for shareholders and here locally we can also see the results in water security in the areas we operate. Thank you. Gracias, Diego. Vamos a continuar. At the end of this session, in addition to knowing the resources, the best practices, and the benefits that every single one of the companies that are with us today have gotten from this, I'd like to know your experience using the word action. How to not, I'm going to ask a new question whether companies have used the water action hub and if so, what has been the usefulness that you've got from using this tool? I'm going to start with you, Diego, please go ahead. Bom, nós não utilizamos diretamente a plataforma, né? nós participamos do projeto El Água nos Une e o nosso we relatório... We don't take part directly in the platform and we are included in the system by the FGV University. They gave us that information and that knowledge that we had to share, uh, that they shared with us during the product project, that was the eucalyptus pulp water footprint, which is one of the products that we produce. And this project enabled us to prioritize projects for water reduction in our actual mill and also see and prioritize some suppliers that we could encourage in terms of water management to guarantee the results for the entire chain. So our study is available at the platform on 
the Brazilian site, and we've seen other studies that had great results, such as ours. Thank you, Diego. Very good answer. Now we'd like to know about Fabricato's case. So again, I'd like to ask Ivan Mejia to share with us, you know, if you've used this platform, and what is the, youth, uh, the usefulness that you've seen in using this? And the platform as such, we have not used it, but it has enabled us to learn about worldwide experiences that have helped us to improve our water resources. The platform, I believe this is an opportunity for you to make friends with a common interest that is to protect the water resources. So right now we haven't done so intensely, but once we get more acquainted with the tool, we're going to start using it and probably better manage our resources. Okay, thank you very much again. Yes, the invitation is always open and also this is an objective of this type of events to share experiences for those companies that are quite interested in knowing more about this so they can start working on this and the lo lo local networks can give them advice and to use this mechanism, such relevant mechanisms. So I will ask the same question to Sandra Alvarez from Ecopetrol. Have you, have you had this experience of using the platform and what can you share with our attendees about the benefits? Yes, thank you very much again, Sandra. I would like, Karen, excuse me. I would like to share with you all that Ecopetrol has been working with this mandate towards water since 2014. This has allowed us to challenge in a constant manner our strategy in regards to water management. And precisely in 2020, now that I heard about the platform, we started to include all of our projects in this platform of Water Action Hub. So which are the projects that we have included here? We have included every project that has to do with the access to water and basic health, and we have included also the results of our research that we carried out, making part of showing the effects of uh, that there are no adverse effects in the use of water being used for oil production, for the irrigation of uh, agricultural activities. This has been included in the platform. We also have included the results of the water reuse that we have been working with since 2015. We have included also, and we are ready to include now, the outcomes of the wildlife project that to date has 49,000 hectares in conservation that are precisely being used towards the protection and conservation of water. For us, I think to include this type of projects in this platform has been quite useful because this allows us to look for this partnership, to look for this collective action. The last project that we included were the results of the feasibility analysis and governance uh, activity for two municipalities of Meta, Acacias and Villavicencio, which are on the eastern part of Colombia. These are places that have a lot of difficulties during the dry season during the dry season is not only problematic for the oil sector but also for the society because they do not have much water at that time so to be able to have this project there this feasibility analysis being present there this allows us to look for partners for this collective partnership this platform helps us and as was being said before by our colleague uh, showing the platform to share precisely to look for to find partnerships which is the most important part. I think this is opening doors in regards to this path to go towards an action quite independent from each sector to go to another multi-sectoral action, a comprehensive action in a basin that allows us to see each other as stakeholders, sharing activities there that can look for better results or look for these improvements to enable uh, availability and also to see what is the society looking for in regards to conservation and protection of water. So thank you very much, Sandra. I think it's quite important to see the experience by companies that have been working with this platform and the value that you see. I think it's quite important to highlight what you have said before. And as was said before by the presentation to be able to connect the different projects that we are working with 
in regards uh, to this activist and as what Sandra has said before, to identify this joint work that can be carried out towards water management now. Well, I think that it's quite important to highlight the platform activity that in not many cases has only to do with private companies, but what with implementing agencies uh, that are working in each country. This is something to share with our participants. I would like to ask Marilyn about her experience in this sense. Well, the experience that we have seen, as was said before, where we had some programs that were uh, completed. This is some information that we have in the Peruvian platform with the Peruvian Water Authority. So we were able to disseminate this information outside Peru uh, using the platform Water Action Hub to be able to disseminate every activity carried out, to show the projects carried out and how much we have been able to reduce, which has been the investment, the beneficiaries, and also the interesting interested stakeholders can request for information. So we're open uh, to offer them and we are connected with Agua no Sune and we can also share, as was said before, now it's important to connect ourselves with other companies of the same sector or with uh, projects uh, that have to do with irrigation. Of course, that's not something has to do with cement production. But anyway, as was said before, there's a lot of information that we have there in the platform. So this is a live dynamic platform where we can include other projects. And I think dissemination is quite important. Thank you, Marilyn. So I think that we have been able to highlight the connection and we would like to invite you all want, uh, to invite all of the companies interested in the platform to identify ways to improve their actions and to improve their practices so they can work and talk with the networks and down at the chat you can read information of the companies that are present here today so you can go to those links and you can see more about their experiences so we always need to have someone that has worked with this before. And so I think that's quite important to have those guides to start working with this topic. So I think to close this uh, part of the event, I would like to ask another question, but I have a little of short time, but I'm going to work with the different countries to share um, countries' experiences about the relevance of inviting companies of the productive chain to use water in a responsible manner. So many of you mentioned this before during your talk, that it's not only limited to the company's way of working, but also to have water being integrated and to have other people, communities getting involved as was said before. So I would like to hear from uh, Sandra, please, if you can share with us your experience, how can you invite Ecopetrol as Ecopetrol, how can you invite other companies of the chain value or value chain, sorry, and as you have done it before? Thank you, Karen. First of all, I'd like to say that the way to encourage others and my colleagues have said so is that the risks linked to water are a reality and it is essential in order to make proper planning for any company, but for any single activity that we want to undertake is very important. And the need to identify the right kind of water for the right kind of use for the right kind of user to the extent that we are able to set those water requirements, every single activity operation, every single production operation will be best. Water is a shared resource. And so we need to understand and undertake multi-sector joint action in order to properly protect water uh, in the development of our operations. Let me tell you that in Ecopetrol, 70% of our operations have to do with water. So a large part of our objectives and part of what we want to do has to be discussed with the contractor. This is why starting in 2017, there's a brand new requirement in our agreements and contracts with services and providers that they need to submit an 
uh, efficient water use uh, clause in the contracts. And this helps the company to achieve the commitments that are set. Otherwise, we will not succeed because they are in charge of 70% 70, 70 of what we do. Something important as well. Last year, we undertook a process of dissemination throughout the goods and services chain, of the use of the strategy of trying to achieve those joint purposes and for 2021, our goal is to create a comprehensive managed, uh, water management network with our suppliers. This will help us to learn from our partners because we know that they're doing a lot uh, to protect water, but we also want to learn best practices. Last year, um, we started a water basin uh, because you can determine the scarcity, the indirect scarcity indirectors for raw materials that are key for moving forward along our initiatives that will allow us to drop the this is a very valuable component if we want to start working with our suppliers because everyone here is to reduce risk if we do this together we're going to succeed water is a shared resource we cannot forget this thank you Thank you. Yeah. Also, as the same question, again, we should encourage other companies along the chain to make responsible use of water. And are you aware of any cases if you want to share it with us? Please, Arturo, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Indeed, Grupo Fertes is a company with national coverage in Mexico, and we have operations elsewhere. You know, millions of Mexicans consume our products every day, so this is a huge responsibility and a huge commitment being able to promote, to promote our values and our focus and our vision to our partners and allies. We have not only worked in operations, as I said before, with water recycling uh, efforts, but also we've been working with our suppliers. Grupo Erdes, we at Grupo Erdes have undertaken different initiatives throughout the years and different activities wherein we try to succeed in developing and growing our supply chain, our value chain. We've worked, and let me set an example, which is very important to us, our sustainable agriculture program. We work with a large number of suppliers, and we, through different pillars that we have set that have to do with uh, water protection, protection of water, soil, emissions control, the proper use of resources, uh, waste management. So through these programs, we've been working with our supply chain, our value chain, by creating these uh, skills and capabilities and by creating synergies. And water is not an exception. Perhaps the sustainable agricultural program has helped us to make and develop and raise awareness of our partners in order for them to also start protecting water and reducing risk. We are also providing technology. We've been working not only with our suppliers, but we want to encourage everyone to make part of our objectives and our goals. So I think that this is the best way to include them in our sustainability plan. A different way in which we've been working, this is also very important to improve this, the support to the community through our social support program. We've helped our communities in the Mexico state and Tapachula. And we've been teaching about clean water, and we've helped them to set up water hubs for their supply. We've helped them to develop water wells and 
also to set up restrooms for sanitation purposes. So as you can see, we've been working hard around water. And these kinds of projects have helped us to link and to bring in the members of our value chain. Great, thank you very much, Arturo. Just to close with this question, I think it will be quite useful to know the Fabricato case. So Juan Octavio Mejia, please, if you can share with us, how have you been able to integrate in your value chain the responsible use of water? Yes, thank you very much, Karen. So the first thing would be that with example, we disseminate our activities. So especially in Colombia, that's the best way of promoting good practices in regards to water management. So, and we are working especially with our suppliers. So as was said before, suppliers have technologies that we can use with our textile productions. So about four years ago, we started working with an event with the suppliers. Uh, we had about 300 suppliers. We had them all together and we invited them for a breakfast. And then when we gave them all a bucket, a water bucket, just a bucket uh, where we collect water with the message that we need to look for the reduction of consumption of water at our homes and to take also this to our companies. And we challenge them to bring ideas, to bring technologies that can help us reduce water use in our homes and also in our industrial processes. So after that, we had many ideas, but I would like to mention one of the cases that were presented. We were able to include a technology that reduces 92% of the use of water in the, the painting of textiles uh, dyeing. So that means that we use a dye, uh, that it's uh, the one we use for textiles and uses a lot of water. And now we were able to reduce the amount of water. Um, we lowered the use of water with this new idea. And we have many more examples. Right now we're developing other activities with other companies to reduce water and and to reduce water, as was said before. On the side of the vendors, suppliers, for sure, every company can do so many things in this regards. So that's the way we encourage our suppliers. And the other event we had, we gave them a watch so they can shower and not to last more than four minutes during their shower. That's something that we gave to our suppliers. And sometimes people uh, are able to see the sustainability programs that we're sharing and so on. So thanks, Canon. So thanks again, quite interesting what you have shared with us. And I know how complex it can be to summarize the strategies that you have at each of your companies. And that's why I repeat this again to our participants. If there's some interest, for sure there is to know more details that you can go to the platform, visit us, and you can see the different links and the contact uh, information of each of our panel members because for sure we'd like to get in touch with them. Now to close, I would like to ask this last question specifically addressed towards Juliana Piccoli. So maybe you can share with us your ideas based on your experience, based on the experience of the foundation, this goes beyond. I think this is more like an invitation to our uh, participants which is the one responsible of achieving the efficacy of waste reduction and more sustainable consumption of water? Can you share these ideas with us? Thank you, Karen. Well, that's a question that I believe is a shared responsibility, right? So I believe that each one has to play their role. Companies do play a very important role because they do consume a lot of water and they do have a lot of power to use technology to reduce water and use it more efficiently. There's also academia that plays a role that can also recommend new ways and recommending tools so that there's 
more efficient water management and also the use of technology to make that even more possible. And I believe that consumers also play a very important role when we look at the entire chain. Because as consumers, we do play a very important role in challenging them and start to demand things and raise the bar uh, in relation to the products that we are buying. So I believe that now consumers are more aware in relation to the environmental impacts of all the products that we consume. And that requirement drives the rest of the chain to have more efficient and responsible water management. Thank you, Juliana. And this is a question closing this panel. Fortunately, because of time, I'd like to discuss further, but we have time restrictions, so I'd like to take this from each of our panelists, Sandra Juan, Arturo, Mera, and Juliana, and Diego, to encourage you to continue such practical efforts in each of our agencies and companies you're becoming benchmarks by pioneering these things. Thank you for doing our invitation. I would like to close by telling our audience that the chat room contains links for the company so that they can learn about their efforts in greater detail. So thank you very much. Now, to close the discussion panel, and I can go back to Vivian in order to move forward with our schedule. Thank you, Karen. Thank you for that. Wonderful moderator's effort. Thank you all to all our guests because they have provided us with a taste of such interest initiatives in record time about what is being done in every country. And without a doubt, you are making every single person in the audience to become interested in this, and also you provided enough information in order for us to know who is doing what in every country in terms of such important partnerships. So, for our panel members, I would like to now give the floor or to give about 130 uh, guests who are with us today to give you the opportunity to participate through the next sort of following question. What do you use the Water Action Hub platform for what purpose? Please select the appropriate choice on the survey on your screen. Also, to our panel members, please answer the question as well, if you will. Bueno, mientras que ustedes responden. Okay, while este... you take a couple of minutes to answer that third question, let me tell you that this event is it's on Zoom's, uh, Colombia's Zoom's University channel, also through Facebook Live, and the Pacto Global Red Colombia, the Global Compact for Colombia, and the Brazil Network. And you will find it in the link that you uh, will see on your screen, which is shared there, so that you may see or listen to the recording of this event afterwards. I just shared it. Bueno, entonces en unos momentos vamos a. Few seconds, we're going to look at the results of this third question of the survey. Mientras tanto, quiero invitar a alguno de los panelistas. In the meantime, I'd like to ask some of our panelists to answer the following question. Asked by Leonardo Manson, which is, can public institutions such as the Minas Gerais 
federal institute become signatories of the water mandate. We have a big project known as uh, yeah, Water Rivers for collecting and using rainfall. Of course, Leonardo, you may be signatories to the Brazil Global Compact Network. They will contact you in order for you to be able to start signing off on these kinds of commitments made by corporate leaders. So we're going to look at the results. We have that 49% of the audience say that they are not using the platform. We believe that this is an essential opportunity to discuss and disseminate the platform so that you can all make the most of it for your different activities and operations. Clearly, you need to join Global Compact and become signatories of their initiatives. Number two, we have that the main interest is learning about what other companies are doing. 23% have an interest in uh, hosting and publishing their best practices and projects, whilst 20% want to identify other organizations working in their own territories in order to enter into partnerships. Okay, so after the survey, we will go into the third session of the event that has to do with the presentation of the projects that were acknowledged in 2020 by the Colombia Compact, uh, Global Compact Network because of their contribution to ODS number six, water and sanitation. So now we will welcome Milton Rejifo, the CEO of Community Management of the Bogota Water Works who will be making a presentation on the project. So good morning to everyone. On behalf of the Waterworks of Bogota, public company that generates 95% of the water drinking water supply for the city. So we are very glad to be here in this event. We're very pleased to have received this invitation to introduce Canta la Rana, Canta la Vida program. So, and indeed, this is a project, Canta la Rana, Canta la Vida. It's making part of it's within the facilities of Canta Rana, which is a dam being built next to uh, Bogota that was built in year 2005. I think that was 15 years ago. So we have 76 hectares here and which are located at the southern part, southeast part of the city. This is a sector with a lot of socioeconomic uh, problems with informal urbanism, housing, uh, expansion that has been quite accelerating during the past few years. And well, shows quality, life quality indicators which are quite low, very rural. Uh, this is a municipality, yes, that it's nearby Bogota, and uh, it was connected to the Bogota DC. It's located as the main axis of the project, as has been said before. This is a dry dam that regulated the floods of Tunguelo River. a river, emblematic river of the city of Bogota that goes uh, uh, at, around the southern part of Bogota. This uh, dam allowed us to uh, fix those problems that have to do with the floods that were present at the southern part and also to be able to fix the problem of wastewater that was thrown to the river. So we started to use the 76 hectares we bought 115 plots and some of those plots were queries. We can show the following slide, please. So as you can see here, this is a map showing Cantarrana, which is the singing frog. It's close to this landfill called Doña Juana. And well, so following slide, please. 
This was the query. This was the landscape that we had before where the dam was built. Here we see the main gate on your right hand side. And we also had this uh, query. We had a lot of queries. We had a lot of queries here. As you can see here, those are forbidden now in the city, but we have found, or we had this situation at the time of building the dam. Anyway, this was a decision taken for innovation as we uh, were able to do at that time. Now we started to build what we have today. This is Cantrana, the singing frog. Well, to recover the forest, about 76 hectares were recovered. The landscape, it's quite different now. We were able to plant about 22,000 trees. We were able to recover the coverage. We were able to recover biodiversity. So the name Rana, or Cantala Rana, it's a frog that was living in that sector. And so now we have the frog present again. So we we're able to use those facilities as you see here on the left hand side of the screen so later on you can see that much better the campsite this is the campsite that was being used for the civil works and now we have been enabled them for community activities now we're being using them for some type of uh, office activities and also for community activities now we have here some rooms for the library. We have some shade at the right hand side. As you can see here, we have some greenhouses where we have some schools coming to plant some uh, products. We have other civil society organizations coming here to use this place. As you can see in the picture on our facilities. We also have a music school, paint art school with children of the sector and young people of the sector. So as you can see, we will open a mini golf course later on. That's the idea of having a mini golf course here. But anyway, we want to change the whole landscape. And um, as you can see, the works, the water collectors and so on were changed. We were able to plant so many trees, as you can see here, and we we're able to recover the landscape. And we are very happy with this. That was for the uh, benefit of the community. Again, here we can see the frog that we have back now, and we were to plant those 22,000 trees to restore the different uh, species that are coming now. We were able to have the participation of the botanic garden also they helped us a lot with planting those trees they have a lot of knowledge in this regards they manage they have the knowledge and now we're having more research in regards to co2 capture and this is the frog again as i said before this is the dentropsophus labialis frog and we also have this other bird on the left hand side of your screen which is called copeton or sonotrichia capensis which is present now. I've been able to carry out a lot of activities here. As you can see here, the river was recovered. This was uh, quite damaged before. This was like a garbage dam. Um, people were dumping garbage there before and we were able to recover this place together with the community. The community was able to understand the message and we were able to build those uh, waste uh, management uh, collectors. And this is upstream. This is a more land, one of the biggest one of the world called Paramo de Sumapaz, even uh, much bigger than the one in Costa Rica. Here we have the Tunjuelo River, which starts there in the Paramo de Sumapaz. And, and it's now much better, as you can see here. Before it was the backyard of the people that lived there because they were dumping their garbage there and so on, as I was said. And now we were able to improve and we changed its face, as you see here. 
what did we do uh, from the beginning? We started working with four different elements, as you see here on this slide. What important elements? Reciprocity with nature. Uh, we do believe that this is something that we need to start working with. And this environmental activity starts when the man starts to think that he's above nature. And that's a tragedy. We have seen this and there are so many books written in this regards. And so what we have started to do was first to have a better relationship with nature, to restore it as far as we can. And some conditions are not there so we cannot do everything but anyway that's the idea to work with this 100 percent in relationship systemic relationship with water source with this is an engineering company the water work uh, company it's an engineering company which is huge that has a lot of experience but anyway we have been able to understand that this is quite important that the objective is not only to have a civil work carried out. No, the objective is water. Water as a resource, as a main resource, as an asset. And so this is a public good. And in every, every time it's more scarce with many difficulties in regards to its management and so on. But we have our core responsibility for sure with the community that has been able to understand this aspect with the different communities that are our neighboring communities that are visiting the park and for sure we have been able to develop synergies and partnerships precisely with other type of entities of the mayor city hall of the city hall and 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 we want to change we want to improve our activities in the park we have some environmental restrictions yes and because of the dam, yes, but we have many things that we can start working with and we can change this at the end into a key factor for development, for people to have fun, to go there and enjoy nature and to have the different communities that are neighboring communities to be able to visit the park and to improve their life quality. Following slide, please. This is exactly what I was being saying before. These are the different activities we carry out with the communities that are neighboring communities. And, and we will continue working with. These are workshops, we have hikes, we have other type of uh, waste collection, uh, people fishing the forest, planting more trees and so on. As you can see here in the pictures, we have a lot of birds here. So we have been teaching children how to capture better pictures of those birds at the Sumapaz moorland. And this is the relationship that we have been able to carry out in this uh, Tunguelo River Basin. We have more pictures here that show exactly what we have been doing with the communities. We have been able to complete these activities as was being said before. We have, uh, contest, uh, paint contest, as you can see here, here we have crops, we have other type of wall paintings, and this has become something quite important for the communities. This place so important for the communities. Please, if you can continue sharing my slides, we have also skate uh, rink, and we have been able to carry out other type of activities with indigenous communities. As you can see here on the left-hand side, uh, part of the screen, we have been planting trees, as you have can see here on the right hand side, upper right hand side of the screen, as I was said before, skating ring, and we have some type of bicycle routes that people use for their enjoyment. And we have also a, um, another, a, this is a very important place for the community. I think that's all I wanted to share with you all. Again, I want to give thanks. This was my presentation. We also have as the conclusion that Cantarana or the sinking frog is being used as um, on the environmental side for sure. We have been able to show as was being mentioned before, Curitiba has an experience quite similar to this one in several quarries. But here in Colombia, I think that there's no other uh, experience such as this one. But anyway, first, because of the recovery of the landscape and also the recovery of the basin of this uh, Tunjuelo River. And um, there's uh, there are many houses near the river. 
and that was not a, a program that was not something that we projected but anyway many people started building their houses there and that was not something that should have been done because the downstream near the basin there are many floods before we had so many floods and now planting those trees has meant the capture of co2 and now we're measuring precisely the co2 capturing and anyway we also have the social aspect we have a very tight relationship with the community as was well said before with civil society organization environmental organizations of this community and well anyway we have many expectations in order to continue developing activities and um, also to strengthen this activities with the community and also with the private sector so thank you very much Doctor, thank you so much for your very interesting discussion about the city project and right now we're going to welcome professor oscar Espina from Columbia Cooperative University will be discussing the drinking water for vulnerable communities project. Let's go ahead, sir. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. Thank you to the Columbia Cooperative University was undertaking a research project by the project will have social impact not only from the standpoint of academia, but also something that will be we will be able to materialize. Thank you. The project whose purpose is to provide drinking water to the vulnerable population. The purpose of the project, as I just said, is to bring in real, tangible solutions to this population who have never had access to drinking water. And for generations, they've had access only to low quality drinking water, which has uh, resulted in uh, health problems and life quality problems. And this project uh, has uh, a contribution to ODS-6. The issues uh, with water is that efforts have indeed been made in order to take water treatment technology to these vulnerable populations, but results have failed short. And today, even some people are drinking very low quality water. And to this end, what the project does is to take that engineering technology and to take it to a number of prototypes that can become useful, long-lasting, and efficient in order to ensure the proper treatment of this water. And as you can see on your screen, this is a feature of Andean uh, countries, very dirty water. And these devices have been designed to remove, efficiently remove this type of uh, contaminant in order to provide cleaner water to these populations. We have developed six different devices, one of which is uh, undergoing the patenting process. Number four and five are the ones that we've been setting up nationwide. We've uh, been providing services to more than 2,000 people. And the one in red, is called the Maracia prototype. This is an international market that was taken to Nicaragua for the Tropical Agricultural Center for Research. And let me tell you a bit more about this in a second. Okay, the devices or prototypes have been designed to be long lasting, to be used in very aggressive environmental conditions because oftentimes the communities do not have the facilities to set up those plants. And so they have been designed in order to ensure that the users, regardless of the schooling or social cultural conditions, will be able to efficiently and safely operate this. The communities themselves will do the maintenance. This is a grant and the communities themselves start learning about the treatment process. Here we can see that the water used to be very low quality and the device in a very few minutes succeeds in cleaning, in purifying this water. These devices, I showed you some of the prototypes, but they include different materials for filtering, ion exchange and so on, but they're 
made for different kinds of uh, different types of water. Not every single water quality is the same. They are different in nearly every case. That's the end result. People families are satisfied. They realize that by their own doing, by using the device in a very few minutes, they end up getting properly uh, filtered water. And they're not only trained as to how to use the devices, but they are also awareness is raised about water culture because we're, especially now that we're facing this uh, very serious pandemic. Next, please. This is the human team behind the project, of which I'm the leader. It's uh, made up of teachers, uh, students, former students that are highly committed with this work. We go to other communities and take these solutions. And clearly, this has enabled us to have an impact on a large number of people who are benefiting from this today. In synergy with different uh, institutions, have been able to uh, come in itself and the private sector. How do we have develop the technology which we donate to the beneficiaries? Number three, we, these are the entities providing the resource, and they've been strategic throughout the process. As I said, this is an international uh, process. You're going to ask about costs depending on the device. It can range between 150 and $200. This is a very low investment. And these are devices whose uh, life uh, time, life cycle could be up to 20 years. This is the impact of the water project. This is a very important information because we've set up 91 devices so far and we've impacted more than 600 people. And this has been set up both domestically and internationally and from the overall benefited population, 40% are children. So here we can explain uh, about this a little better. So this is designed for the most vulnerable populations in our territories. Next, please. This has been our impact, not only domestically, but also internationally. In Nicaragua, we cared for more than 150 people in Nicaragua. And this was funded by the Swiss uh, Cooperation Agency. And in this case, we cared for the Somoto population. And the rest of the population that we've cared for has uh, lives in Colombia. In the case of Nicaragua, we developed this prototype, this pilot project, in order to care for 30 families that drink very low quality water, water that they take from small sources. And they were facing a very serious problem. And the CATI invited us to provide technical support in order for us to provide this, uh, this population with the device. It was called Maracua, that's the name that the population itself gave it. This is the technical specs. And you can see the water that they used to drink and the water that they now drink. In order to filter this water, we use a natural product that we extract from Moringa because the Northern Nicaragua Codor is characterized for having high Moringa production, they call it Marango. They, it has different names throughout uh, Central and South America. Here in Colombia, we've worked in two different departments in Tolima, where I live, and in Cundinamarca, where the capital Bogota is located. This is the population that we've cared for up to now. Next, please. And these are the results. This is the, these are the pictures. And here you can see the before and the after. This is operated directly by the population. 
even in Bogota, in a very marginalized uh, district, in the high part of the city, we were also there helping out a family with the support of the Colombian Engineering Society. We have some young people here with the project, and there are different stakeholders who have made their own contributions to the process, to the project. Next, please. Okay, we've not only improved water quality within households, but also within institutions, particularly community homes led by the Colombian Family Welfare Institute, the entity that cares for vulnerable children. We've been supporting them in order to provide drinking water for different education institutions throughout different municipalities or districts that have water supply issues and the systems have proven quite useful. They're easy to use, they're user friendly. And so this has helped us to ensure the sustainability thereof. We've also provided some training to the population. It is not enough to provide them with devices, but you need to teach good uh, habits. The current generations will need to learn how to ensure the supply of properly treated water. This training is provided comprehensively. And even under the process, the children are taught to operate the system in order to show them how easy it is to get good results. As a final reflection, this is an effort undertaken by the Columbia Cooperative University with practitioners. It's been ongoing for a long time. The practical application began in 2017, but we had been working on it since 2011. This has required a long-standing research process of water treatment, although some of these are still far uh, from becoming a reality for different communities. What we've done is take state-of-the-art technology and take it to these uh, communities that are highly in need of these because they are the ones that are resorting to highly polluted water sources. I'd like to thank you for the invite. And I hope that these kinds of initiatives will be able to be replicated, not only in Colombia, but uh, throughout Latin America. Thank you. Vivian? So, microphone, Vivian, please. Yes, sorry, it was muted, sorry. I was giving thanks to the professor for his uh, talk and also I would like to express excuses because of the uh, problem that somebody wrote in the chat that we were able to control that person. So thanks for the good comments. And again, everything it's going well and now it's normal. And now, now to complete this event, I would like then to give the floor Oh, no, excuse me, we would like you to please go to the links that we are sending right now in order for you to let us know if you have been joined our Global Compact, if you are interested on being part of this initiative because we are quite interested on being able to collect this type of information. And besides, we are now receiving some questions, especially two questions that will be uh, asked to a Copetrol representative, Sandra, in regards to if they are able to generate heavy metals during oil extraction and the way you manage oil and hydrocarbon. And based on this, which are the ideas that you are trying to implement to reduce water consumption and what type of treatment is being used to the reuse of those water? Yes, thank you, Vivian. For the first question, the composition of production water has more organic compounds and salt. And heavy metals are not so many. They are very below the detected limit. So 
be in regards to the second question, how we can establish our goals towards reduction of water, we based ourselves on risk identification in our facilities where we have samples of water scarcity. So we focus our initiatives towards water reduction here. So we also work towards the use of water and the whole hydrocarbon um, use and sector, we have an experience in Huila. Here we had a capturing of water for the reuse of water in our oil and gas production. We were able to reduce the water use here. So we need to detect exactly where we have the risk and then we need to identify exactly where we can reuse water and uh, of course clean this water. Okay, thank you very much again, Sandra, for your answer. And we would like to share um, the survey for you to complete, please. We would like to know where we need to improve, if you have liked it or not, and we would like to know about your experiences of the event. And now we will close the event. I want to give thanks again to our panel members the ones that have been able to participate in their conversation with your experiences, so important experiences. As a conclusion, we can say that um, the participation of everyone in Water Action Hub is quite important because it helps. This is a tool which is quite important to make visible and to make visible those different projects to improve water management in the same manner, the different companies, the different entities in regards to their benefits are gaining sustainability, which is quite important. So right now, we are all aware about the need of approaching this. They reduce operational costs doing this, and it does help towards the uh, sustainable development goals. We also gain competitivity, and at the same time, we are able to achieve a higher connection with the different strategic partners. And lastly, I would like to highlight the work carried out by the different members. I want to give thanks to Juliana Paloma of Global Compact Brazil, Carol Hurtado from Ecosud, Swiss Embassy of Colombia, and Jamie Bula, Diego Gonzalez, Paola Manjarres, and Catherine Sanchez of Global Compact Colombian Network. And without their support, this could have not been possible. Again, thanks. And I hope I, we can see you again in the near future. Thank you. Goodbye. Greetings to everyone. Thanks again. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias a todos ustedes. Muy amables y felicitaciones. Thanks again and congratulations. Great. I'm very pleased to be able to have joined you all here. Thanks to the Swiss cooperation, to Pacific Institute, and of course, to the different networks of Brazil, Guatemala, Mexico, and for sure, uh, Dr. Vivian Garcia in Colombia for her hard work to be able to have this event. Thanks again.